Welcome to the MTD Technical Corner. Today we're going to be looking at Fifax's solutions from SolidCam, and I'm joined by Ben. Ben, welcome to the MTD Technical Corner. Thank you. Ben, great subject, and I'm looking forward to get into this and dive into this technically. But what has driven the evolution of CAM for Fifth Axis machining solutions? So if we start from the, the beginning with five axis, you've got three plus two, four plus one, right up into simultaneous five axis. So the key driving point really is the complexity of parts being designed in CAD systems, so like SolidWorks and Inventor. The more complex the part becomes, the more need there is for a five axis machine. So even in three plus two, you're cutting down setups. So from three axis machine onto a five axis machine, you can do it in two ops rather than maybe five, six operations. Right then up into simultaneous five axis where the complexity of the part demands the, the, uh, the more complicated tool paths. Uh, as you can see here with the, the barrel cutting. I mean, with, with a, an application like this, Ben, it's safe to say it, it would be pretty much impossible to program this by hand. Yeah, especially in the timescales as well that we can program it. So <clears throat> you, you may be able to, uh, to create the toolpath uh, manually, uh, but uh, yeah, far easier using CAM software, uh, driving directly off the model from the CAD system. So simplification of programming parts such as this, how is this achieved from SolidCAM? So SolidCAM has a, a, a nice, easy to use interface, um, right up to the complexity of five axis. So if you're already a SolidCAM user, for instance, you already know how to do the two and a half D uh, profiling, things like that. Up into five axis simultaneous, it's the same window, same graphical interface, uh, exactly the same usage inside SolidCAM. So it's, a, it's then just a matter of deciding what surfaces you're gonna use, what tooling to use, and you can generate the toolpaths pretty easily. With the SolidCAM package, as, as you're saying, you kind of, growing into the, a package such as this from free axis machining, is, it, is, this, is this quite common? Yeah, so you've got customers where they've already got solid cam, they've already got uh, three axis machines or simplified machines. Um, they may then venture into getting a more complicated machine and we can just grow with that customer, uh, adding on the necessary modules that they need. Now, we're looking at this application again and, and this looks like barrel cutting to me. Yeah. Um, what advantages do you get from programming a part like this with, with a barrel cutting tool? Well, the initial advantage and the most uh, sort of uh, common advantage really is the, the step down and the time saving over using a ball nose tool. You can see here on this cutter, using a two mil step down on the semi-finish and then a one mil step down on the finishing cut uh, gives us a nice surface finish. As opposed to on the ball nose, you're probably looking at 0.1 step over uh, on there. So already you're at 90% cycle time savings uh, just from the, the step downs. 90%? Yeah. I mean, and then the other advantage then of a barrel cutter is keeping the tool nice and short. So we can, uh, it's not just for curved faces. You can see on this component here, we actually barrel cut the, the lower uh, face on here because the access using a straight tool is not. Uh, you know, you just can't get in there, so use the barrel cutter to create that flat face as well as creating this sort of nice so shape. This is a really important there. feature there because then you're not getting the vibration that you would have done if you're using a longer tool. Exactly. Is that correct? Yeah, so if we, got a, if we was using this one here, we'd be at 90 degrees, the table would be in the way as the head's coming down, you'd have a nice long tool stuck out trying to machine across here, whereas we have the, the barrel tool, which means we can tip, tip up like this and have the contact point on there and still produce a nice surface finish. So we're touching on barrel tools, but there's lots of different tools such as lens tools that you can use. Can you explain in a little bit more detail the kind of applications you'd use with these tools and, and, and what that tool means? Yeah, so a lens tool is uh, part of the barrel family, but the, uh, the actual uh, convex of the, of the tool is on the bottom of the tool. So whereas you would have a ball nose, um, say for instance you'd have a 12 diameter uh, shank, 12 diameter ball nose, yeah, you may have a step over of 0.1 to create a finish on there. With the same size tool, so 12 mil, you can have a lens tool on the bottom, so maybe 25 diameter, uh, 25 radius, sorry, on the bottom, which is effectively a 50 diameter ball nose. So you can then use that for three axis work. So you could uh, you could generate this shape here in three axis. So barrel cutters are not all about five axis. You can use them in three axis uh, machines as well. Like you mentioned, three plus two, four plus one, or four simultaneous. And, and some mm. of these demos that, uh, that we can see on the screen here, kind of highlight that you can actually machine any complex component using your 
CAM packages. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Now, <coughs> one thing that is really important with the complexity of the components, but not only the components, the complexity and the evolution of the technology and the machine tools, how easy is it to interface your product with a machine tool? So that's where the post-processors would come in. So we, we write and develop all the process post-processors uh, in the UK locally. Uh, so they're all done by us at our technology centre in, in Barnsley. Um, we would go out on site, test the post-processors, make sure everything's working correctly so that when the code comes out of SolidCam, it's in the machine and it's ready to run. There should be no manual edits between CAM and the machine. So you're, you're reducing any potential downtime Correct, simplifying yeah. the programming yes. uh, and it ma it making it easy I suppose for, for, for people working within the organisation. Yeah that's correct, you sort of, uh, you, you're creating that standard uh, as well so you've not got two people programming in a different style, uh, we create the same code for different machines on the same machine, different jobs uh, and everybody can read that code, use that code. So employees, programmers within an organisation, you're standardising the programming within that organisation and what kind of benefits would you get from that? Uh, so the benefits from that is obviously everybody can move around machines, uh, everybody can look at that code on different machines, see the same uh, see it in the same style, the same layout. Uh, you've also got different jobs obviously being done with the same tool paths, the same uh, strategies uh, as well. So Ben, there doesn't seem to be any limits with your um, solutions and CAM solutions that you offer, but the product is one thing, but what about the technical support that you can offer? So that extends on from the post process of being locally supported. Um, technical support, again, is all local, it's all run from the technology centre. Um, we're all, we've got the engineers there ready to assist with any um, programming, any um, issues that they may have with using the software, um, straight into an engineer, get the response they need straight away, carry on running the machines. So you on. practice what you preach? Correct, yeah, we've got the technology centre where we've got uh, machines in the technology centre to prove um, the, the capabilities and what we can do. Uh, we have open days and open houses there, anybody's welcome to come and have a look at the technology centre at any time. Uh, we'll show them the functionality, we'll show them exactly what we can do. So for any existing Fifth Axis users or any new Fifth Axis users that have watched this Technica Corner, um, how, should, how should they get in touch and how can you help them? So they can just get in touch with us, uh, contact us by phone, email, however they prefer. Um, we can come and do an on-site demonstration, we can come to your facility, we can prove our capabilities on your machine, um, on your parts. Okay.